What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you are having a great day. A while ago, I created the complete Laravel 8 course for beginners and I want to take it a step further by writing APIs in Laravel. I won't do an introduction video where I introduce myself, but I will mention that I have a Patreon where I will share the source code and materials. And if you have questions about anything else, you can reach out to me on Instagram and support me there. That being said, let's get right into the actual content of this video. The first couple of videos will be purely theoretical. I remember when I started working with APIs the first time and honestly, I didn't have a clear understanding of what it actually was. So I want to prevent that it happens to you. So be patient and after 7 or 8 episodes, we will be starting to write actual code. In order to get a good understanding of this course, you need to have a clear understanding of what Laravel is and how it works. Basic stuff won't be covered anymore since I already have a complete course about it. Now obviously, you don't need to be a pro in coding or in Laravel in general, but keep in mind that we're not going to focus on the framework itself, but more about how to write an API within Laravel. So eventually, my goal is to make a mini-series where I introduce you to APIs, and then I'll make a follow-up course where we're going more in-depth. To get a better understanding of what an API actually is, I usually try to use real life examples. So just imagine a restaurant for a second. A restaurant has visitors that sit at a table and eat food. And the restaurant also has a kitchen where they prepare your food. Now this is the perspective as a non-programmer. If you look at it as a developer or as a programmer, the front end of the application is where you sit at the table and the back end of the application is the kitchen where they prepare your food. You're probably wondering right now, Dari, this still does not tell me what an API is. You can see the API part as the menu. Visitors can pick their food and the kitchen will cook that. So once again, in programming terms, an API makes it possible for a front-end developer to request a specific task or resource from the backend. You select between different options or endpoints then we can order it from our backend, which then will prepare the food and it will send back the data or the food for us. You will hear the term REST or RESTful a lot. And I want to take a minute to talk about what the word REST or RESTful actually is. Now, first off, every letter in the word REST stands for something. The R and E stands for representational, the S stands for state, and the T stands for transfer. Still, if you're new, this might be a little bit weird, isn't it? Well, REST is an architectural style that is used for communication between a server and a client. A couple good things to keep in mind is that REST uses HTTP, so Hypertext Transfer Protocol, as a base communication style. By now, I kind of hope that you guys know that we use HTTP for HTML and other medias from our server to our client. We upload a website to the server, and then it will be shown to our client. Another good point is that REST data will be sent in either XML or JSON. Both XML and JSON are languages that are used for transferring data. The reason why we use XML or JSON is because it makes it a lot easier to read the output. Why? Well, as you might know, XML and JSON are both used because it's readable by humans. In the next video, I will make a video where I will show you all the server responses. But for now, keep in mind that it makes it a lot easier to read. Now you don't need to learn REST or RESTful, since it's a language itself. But as long as you understand, or a better word to use, adapt to HTTP, you will adapt to REST. Up until this point, we only gave compliments to REST and we haven't really talked about the disadvantages. Now REST is not stateful. And what I mean with that is that you can't carry the state from one request to another. So basically, you always need to send some kind of context to the server. You can't pull data from the server. And I think that this is maybe the most important point. You can't push data through REST, so you can only read. Now with that being said, this was it for this video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.